Hello from SkyFi Audio in Ridgewood, New Jersey. Today I thought I'd do a breakdown of our lab bench, our test bench where everything uh, that we buy and sell and make goes through uh, for testing, calibration, etc. Um, taking um, quite a few years to assemble the right combination of components and the right layout, but I thought I'd share it for those of you that are assembling a bench similar. and. Uh, tell you what we've uh, what's been successful what hasn't been so the first thing to notice is uh, the layout right we've got everything right within reach uh, trying to minimize getting up and having to go over and grab things and lay things out or plug them in so everything's connected and, and fairly modular um, most of all the components run through this patch bay down here and I'll go through it in in detail and that allows us to sort of make all the connections necessary depending on the type of equipment that we are uh, testing. Um, in the first row you'll see all our tools uh, carefully assembled and labeled and then some test meters and oscilloscope, uh, Keithley, DVM and then uh, another digital voltmeter. On the second row up here you'll find a power supply, a Nakamichi a analyzer, our preamp that we run some of our equipment with through and uh, this happens to be an, uh, an audio research two unit. And then uh, an audio generator here in the far right. And then our soldering station. Um, up at top row, you'll find uh, some test speakers. We've got some KEF, uh, I think the reference 101s, uh, some Sencor FM analyzer and uh, CFM analyzer there. And below it, it would be the power analyzer and some audio equipment for playback, a tuner, a CD player and uh, an amplifier. And then just above that, a, a phone or preamp. And then back to the top row, uh, a Suncor uh, isolation transformer, um, a little thing with belt is a dim bulb tester, which is super handy and, and making sure things don't blow up when we turn them on. And back here, our solder station, uh, frequently used parts. Uh, some more testers in here in this drawer. Uh, some commonly used schematics and reference material, uh, magnifying, and then our selectable cables, so neatly arranged by type. Um, so it all works pretty well. Um, it's still evolving. Uh, we're in the process of adding uh, analog devices, um, spectrum analyzer, it's a super cool uh, handy tool. We're still developing that and figuring out how we're gonna integrate into our bench. So. And then down at the work surface, it's a two inch uh, maple laminated top with a rounded edge. We found that to be super comfortable. And um, a platform on casters, they're on wheels. And this allows us to take a heavy amplifier and sort of spin it around and, and work in all different directions without uh, damaging anything. So let me go a little uh, deeper dive into each of the components and how we arrived at it. So starting from the power side, um, this just arrived recently. It's our Sencore Powerite PR570. It's an isolation transformer, both for safety of us and safety of the equipment. It allows us to dial in the voltage carefully and set some current limits so that if we're testing, for example, this Mac 1700 or 1900 preamp, um, we can kind of put a limit on to how much current it's gonna draw before it trips. So you can go to the trip set setting set the exact uh, amperage that you want it to limit at, and then go to output. And uh, as soon as the amplifier draws more current than we've set, this will trip and, and shut off and protect it. It also allows us to sort of dial back the voltage. We've got a uh, pretty high voltage reading here in New Jersey and New York, so this allows, especially when we're testing tube amplifiers, to set the voltage to a more nominal value. It's got some other features on you know, inverting hot to neutral and hot to safety and all these other things. And it's connected um, to its output right to our dim bulb uh, interface, which is essentially just a 100 watt bulb uh, wired in place. And this is fabulous for uh, tube amplifiers. It gives us a sort of visual indication of something going wrong, uh, especially uh, in the more expensive tube amplifiers. It's a great way to protect them. So when we power up something, uh, I can do it. Well, can be a bit to show you, but when we power up a, a tube amplifier, for example, the bulb will, will light uh, pretty brightly at first, and as the capacitors and the tubes take charge and normalize, the bulb will dim again. Now, if there's a fault, the bulb will go bright and stay bright, and we'll know immediately to shut it down. 
and then uh, we plug our equipment to one of these two places, right? So this is with the bulb in place, and this is a pass-through right to the sun core. So super handy, and we're, we're pretty pleased with this setup. Right above it, you'll see our patch bay. Um, this allows us to essentially make all the connections. Yeah, it's pretty silly that our numbers are inverted, but they don't really mean anything to us. We've got our writing just below it. Um, so the first set of uh, uh, speaker terminals uh, go to our um, uh, stereo power amplifier analyzer. So if we were to test a piece of equipment right now, we'd go over here to our patch bay, grab a set of leads, plug them right in here, and then to the back of the amplifier in question, right? bananas or adapters or whatever else we might be using at the time. So that'll feed the output of the amplifier right to our Sencor analyzer. Uh, moving over to here, so that's left and right channel. Moving over here, this is essentially the tie between the preamp and the amplifier. I mentioned earlier we've got a NAD monitor series amplifier in place and a audio research preamp and this essentially separates the amplifier from the preamp and allows us to uh, test an amp or test a preamp by plugging right into it. Then uh, the rest of the connections just mimic the back of the preamp. We've got our video inputs, phono inputs, uh, CD output, We've got a variable CD player up top. And these are the connections between our bench amplifier and the speaker. So if we want to be testing an amplifier, for example, with music instead of uh, signal, we'll pull these out and, and plug them into the amplifier audio because every amp that we test here goes through both types of tests then we've got a uh, output from our sine wave generator here an output from our cd player for testing digital sources and a uh, rg cable going to an antenna that we've got in the roof for testing signal strength and tuners all right you'll notice here we've got a cool roll of um, solder this is super handy uh, and used a lot, so it's a great place for it. Moving on to the tools. Um, this we just made out of uh, half inch um, oak. Uh, we essentially, over the years, decided what tools we use on a frequent basis and narrowed it down to the everyday stuff. So we've got a series of you know miniature screwdrivers, uh, five sets of uh, miniature pliers, all our Allen wrenches, you know, both metric and standard. A flashlight, a brush, our super cool DeWalt gyroscope, um, gyroscope controlled uh, screwdriver. Got some calipers in the back, uh, a soldering uh, suction device, a larger screwdrivers, and in the back we've got a row of pliers, um, wire strippers in both sizes, and uh, some. Uh, Works, miniature torque screwdrivers. And then moving on to the right, we've got our stuttering station, which is um, a Weller. Uh, it's a professional unit. We've got it on a cool swivel arm that lets us sort of put it closer to the work. Um, got some soldering flux in it, and here's the Weller in action. It's got the ability to have three heads connected to it. Uh, we have a, a, a fine soldering connected and we often use a, a desoldering station, and then the third one would be for like a larger tip. This is the suction section of the soldering station, and the actual temperature, as you see, it's climbing pretty quickly. So it's the nice thing about it, it actually does climb to temperature pretty quickly so that you don't have to keep it on all the time and burn the tips, you just, within almost, if you notice already, in about 15 seconds, we're up to 400 degrees, and It'll stabilize quickly at around five or six under where we use it mostly. Moving over to the left, um, this is our uh, audio generator. Uh, we like this audio generator in particular because it has a, a knob for an amplitude for the output level. Um, the modern ones have push buttons and they're digital and it's really hard to sort of find, for example, the you know to fine tune the output so that we can find the point at which the amplifier distorts. So we look long and hard to find uh, a manual control. And this is the sweet frequency here with the multipliers. If you're wondering why it's sitting sideways, it's because it doesn't fit in the shelf the way we've got it, but it's pretty accessible and usable. Um, moving on to our 
preamp for the workbench. This is an Audio Research SP14. It's a tube unit, and uh, we like it mostly because it has everything we need, including you know, really easy to access balance control and different attenuation for gain. And it's got a decent phono section in it as well, so it's it's fairly versatile. It certainly doesn't have to be something of this caliber, but it's here, so we use it. Moving over to here, here's our Nakamichi T100 audio now analyzer. This is a really cool piece of equipment used to calibrate tech techs, reel to reels, uh, measure well and flutter, all sorts of really neat things on it. You could actually do THD as well. Um, here's a DC power supply, Chinese power supply, dual output, nothing special. Then down below, it's a two channel oscilloscope from, again, another Chinese unit. Works fairly well, but we're in the process of replacing this with something a little more sophisticated. And then moving on to the right, we've got um, uh, a Siglent um, multimeter. Um, pretty good unit. It does the job well. It takes a little bit to load up from power off, which is a bit annoying. So when we turn the bench on, uh, you have to manually turn it on, and that's a bit of a delay because it takes almost a minute for it to boot up completely, and then you're just sitting there staring at it while it boots on. Sitting above it is a Keithley uh, multimeter and we like this unit for measuring total harmonic distortion. It has the ability to generate a reference sine wave and then measure back what the distortion is for the device. We use this in all our amps and preamps. And then moving up to the top, the Kef uh, 101 speakers. These are in place because they're easy to find replacement drivers and it's got a protection circuit on, circuitry on it. So if we have something go wrong, uh, they are a little bit protected internally through electronics. The NAD reference or monitor series uh, components, uh, just for generating music and FM, et cetera, et cetera. And then moving on to what, uh, or two of the best pieces of equipment we've got us. First is a Sencor power analyzer. Uh, this is pretty neat. And you can watch other videos uh, where we actually put it into use. It has the ability to receive both a speaker level and a line level signal. And it measures um, uh, its output in both watts or volts. So it's auto ranging and um, it generates, it provides an output up to our oscilloscope. So we essentially go from the speakers or from the amplifier speaker outputs into the analyzer where we can measure power um, it's got internal dummy loads of up to 250 or 200 watts and it has the ability to select the the ohms for the type of amplifier that we're using and then uh, we're using it for watts here and then we can switch over here and use it for line level to measure voltage and then above it is another Sencor piece they're often used together um, but this is essentially an FM analyzer this allows us to generate an FM signal and feed it straight into a tuner so we can analyze its performance. We have been able to turn on and off the stereo um, functionality, switch it to mono, do left plus right, left minus right, select what sort of signal we want to feed into the tuner, the pilot modulation, the audio modulation, and the RFIF tuning. So um, these used together are a pretty powerful way to test and analyze how well a tuner is performing. Um, then we've got um, some pretty good lighting. We've got lighting in both uh, this shelf here and overhead lighting as well. And importantly, we've got also a way to dim the lights. So oftentimes when we're working with dimming with tube equipment, we like to be able to just dim the lights. So we've mounted a, uh, a Lutron dimmer right here at the workbench uh, just to quickly uh, let us see the glow of the tubes. Um, stand back so you've got a better view of it. Um, and that's about it. And then to the right of it is the secondary bench that we use for more breaking in equipment. It'll just, after we've tested an amplifier, if we wanna run it for a while, we'll move it on to the bench on the right and test it for a period of time. So that's it. Our humble uh, lab at SkyFi Audio. If you like this video, please subscribe. That'll encourage us to make more videos for you. And check out our website for all this sort of cool vintage equipment that comes through here, uh, skyfiaudio.com. Thanks for watching.